Google Earth is a free software program that allows the user to fly over a virtual globe viewing the Earth through high-resolution satellite images. The program also features many data layers as information sources, including points of interest, roads, bus stops, and 3D buildings. Google Earth also enables the user to create annotated maps and import personal spatial data. This presentation illustrates how to import common GIS vector data formats, such as shapefiles, into Google Earth and how to enhance the visual appearance of this information through style templates. This image displays the main window of Google Earth with some labeled features and panels. The 3D viewer is the window for viewing the globe and its terrain. It contains the status bar on the bottom, which displays point coordinates, elevations, and the viewpoint altitude above mean sea level. In this presentation, the focus will be on importing data through the file menu and applying style templates through the edit menu. To import data into Google Earth, select the file menu and then the import option. An open pop-up window will appear requesting the location of the file that should be imported. Google Earth can import data in a wide variety of geospatial file formats. To see if any of the files in your directory are compatible with Google Earth, one can select the All Data Import Formats option at the bottom of the file format list. One of the more common file formats that will be discussed in this presentation is GIS vector data, such as an Esri shapefile. There are three types of GIS vector data features, points, lines, and polygons. Other naming conventions exist, such as Google Earth's placemarks, paths, and polygons. To manage these feature types, the predominant vector GIS file format is a shapefile with the file extension .shp. In a given project, all three feature types can be used. For example, this image shows three distinct features in the vicinity of the UF Fort Lauderdale Research and Education Center. The red squares are point features indicating traffic lights. Yellow lines are line features indicating major roads. Lastly, the orange figure is a polygon feature of the campus boundary. Each feature type has its own shapefile. To import a shapefile into Google Earth, one must select the Import option as shown on a previous slide. The appropriate .shp file extension must be selected in order to view the shapefile. In this example, a point shapefile of all artificial reef deployments in Florida is selected. Due to the number of point features exceeding 2500, a pop-up appears regarding data import options. After importing all features, Google Earth prompts the user regarding the application of a style template. Select No at this time. Style templates will be discussed in subsequent slides. This is the imported artificial reef shapefile without the application of a style template. All Florida artificial reef deployments through the middle of 2014 are symbolized with gray circles. This image is an imported polygon shapefile of all the building footprints in Coral Gables, Florida. The default symbology uses a kaleidoscope of colors with each polygon outlined in white. By zooming in on the northwest corner of Coral Gables in the rightmost image, patchwork of colors is evident. From a user perspective, a style template should be applied to the imported shapefile data to make better use of the visualization capabilities of Google Earth. To use a style template, highlight the file that needs the template. Select Edit from the menu bar, then select Apply Style Template from the drop-down menu. A pop-up will appear. Since we do not yet have a template for the Coral Gables building layer, we'll select Create New Template. There are three primary tabs within the Settings menu for each polygon style template. The Name tab indicates the field that will be used to label the features. The Color tab is used to set the color pattern for the data file. The default option is to use random colors, hence the original kaleidoscope pattern upon import. There are many fields in the Coral Gables building footprint data that can be used to set the color. In this example, the building height was selected as the field from which to base the color scheme. The color palette can be manually chosen by selecting a beginning and end color. In this example, building heights will be shown from shortest in green to tallest in red. The number of buckets is edited to reflect the number of desired bins to display. 
Further, the maximum value for each bucket can be edited in case the default bin widths are not visually appealing. In the example, a few tall buildings skewed the default bin width, so bucket maximums were entered manually. To further enhance the visual appeal of the data, the third dimension, height, can be shown. The default setting is to clamp features to ground. In other words, make all features fixed to the earth. In the Coral Gables footprint data, the building height can again be used to visualize height of the many structures. Data can be split into buckets similar to the color setting, or features can be displayed along a continuum of building heights. When using actual elevations, make sure the proper units, meters or feet, are selected. Upon finishing the editing of the style template, the user clicks OK and is prompted to save the template for future application. After applying the edited style template, one can use a bird's eye view to distinguish the residential area of Coral Gables, shown in green, from the urban cores with the tall buildings, shown in orange and red. When the viewing perspective is changed, the 3D buildings further enhance the visualization of the downtown urban areas. Using a similar approach with the point shape file, a style template was applied to the artificial reef data. The green points indicate the deepest artificial reef deployments, while the red points indicate the shallowest. This presentation introduced one major type of data import supported in Google Earth, GIS vector data. In addition to the default data import styles and symbols, style templates were applied to enhance the user's visual experience.